When it comes to working with blobs in Azure, we can offload a lot of work by getting sassy. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a principal software engineering manager at Microsoft. In this video, we're going to walk through using SaaS URLs. So not quite the SaaS that you might have been thinking about, the SaaS URLs from Azure Blob Storage. And what this is going to allow us to do is get URLs to resources that other people will be able to use. This way, we can offload the work that we could be doing to someone else so they can upload and download blobs directly. If that sounds interesting, just a reminder to subscribe to the channel and check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. Let's jump over to Visual Studio and check it out. In a previous video, which I'll link up here if you haven't seen it already, I was walking through some of the basics of working with Azure Blob Storage. So at this point in this video, the intention is that you already have your Blob Storage account set up, but if you haven't done that already, you can check out that previous video and it will guide you up to this point. That means that you've also already seen things like being able to upload streams and download stream data from Azure Blob Storage. We are going to be using the Azure Storage Blobs NuGet package. I'm using 12.22 for this, but you might be using something a little bit later, depending on when you're watching this video. To kick things off, we're going to start by declaring a blob ID. This is just going to be for demonstration purposes. I described in the previous video that if you want to use something that looks like a file folder structure, so like a directory name followed by a file name, you can do that in Azure Blob Storage in the portal will show you it looking like a file folder hierarchy. But there are no actual folders. So this is just literally a pointer to that blob. It's just a unique identifier for the blob. There is no folder, just the blob. Now, what I'm going to do in this example is we're going to start by creating a blob client for this blob identifier. And what I'm going to do is generate a SAS URI for that. And just to clean things up a little bit to make it more readable, you'll notice that from line 48 to 50 here, what I'm going to be doing is generating a SAS URI. This is just a brief interruption to remind you that I do have courses available on Dome Train focused on C Sharp. So whether you're interested in getting started in C Sharp, looking for a little bit more of an intermediate course focused focus on object-oriented programming and some async programming, or are you just looking to update your refactoring skills and see some examples that we can walk through together? You can go ahead and check them out by visiting the links in the description and the comment below. Thanks, and back to the video. I am marking it with write, and I am going to have it have an expiration of one hour. So what this means is that we're going to be able to get this URI that we can work with, and we can give it to someone else. That someone else will basically be able to have write access to this blob for one hour. That means they can't read from that blob, but they can put data there. There are other permissions we'll see in just a moment that allow us to do other operations, but in this case, they can just write things to that very specific blob ID using this URI. Conceptually, you might think about a client server application and you might have your application running in the cloud with a backend server. That backend server might be serving all sorts of requests for your application already. But if you have the situation where, say, a user in your front end wants to upload a file, what you could do is design it such that that user will upload the file, stream it to your backend server, then your backend server streams it up to Azure Blob Storage. However, what you could do instead and save some bandwidth between these resources is say, hey, Azure Blob Storage, give me a URL that someone else can go use. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So, hey, Azure Blob Storage, give us this SaaS URI. I'm going to go give that to my front end, for example, and that way the user can go upload a file directly to Blob Storage. There are lots of considerations that you'll want to have with this, but the idea is that you can delegate where the upload happens to someone else by using one of these URLs. What we're going to do from there is we're going to make an HTTP client. Again, if you're doing this on a server, you want to be using HTTP client factory. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. And we are going to put, the keyword here is put, you need to use this HTTP verb put to be able to put that data at that location. So we'll provide the upload URI and the HTTP content. In this case, it's going to be string content that's defined here on line 53, and it'll just say hello world. If we were to go run this example, all that this part so far is going to do is upload. Once we run all of this, it will upload hello world into a blob located at this ID. Now, I want to string more of these things together before we go run it. So I just want to walk through things, and then we're going to go run this example. If we scroll down a little bit lower, I'm going to go generate another URI, but I'm going to read instead. So what you'll notice is that I'm using read for the permissions here, but I'm also going to set a read period of only five seconds. 
And what I wanted to do to demonstrate in this example is show you that if we read just six seconds after creating this, so we wait one second too long, it's not going to work. And that's because literally we made this SAS URI to have a very short timeout period. So from there, if we go down a little bit lower, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Again, let me put this across multiple lines to make it a little bit easier on your eyes here. And when we go to do this one, I'm going to have a whole hour. And I'm not going to make this YouTube video a whole hour to show you it expire. I'm just making it long enough so that you can see that we are able to read when the timeout period is long enough. So we'll go read that back. And the very bottom of this program is going to read the response that we get back and write that response to the console. So to summarize very briefly, SAS URI, we're going to get that to be able to write. We'll put hello world there. Then we're going to try an example of reading when it's too short. Then we're going to try an example of reading when the timeout period is something that we have missed. And then we'll try a final example where we're within that timeout period and we can successfully read the data. Let's go run it and see what happens. Already we see we have a bit of a problem here. So what's going on? Uploading blob to folder, it says that it is uh, going to this ID here. And then we see status code from creating is a bad request. Everything else after that I expect to be broken. We get a forbidden, then we get a not found. So it's kind of crapped out on us right at the beginning, and it says bad request. Now, something that I hid on purpose is that you need to include a header when you're doing this. You do need to go make sure you're reading the documentation and understanding the different parameters. This isn't going to be super in-depth on absolutely everything you can configure, but if I go back up here, you remember I hide things in plain sight in my comments, right? So <laughs> if we go run this now, you'll see that we have this x-ms-blob-type header, and we're going to add block blob. Now, when we go to do this, we should see that the upload specifically that passes, and then we'll be able to examine the rest of the output in the console. Let's go try again and see how far we get. And so far, so good. Status code from creating is marked as created. So that's what we want. We do get a forbidden when we're waiting too long. So we had a five second timeout period. We waited six seconds. We missed that window. We get a forbidden response. But if we try again and we have an hour long window to use that SAS URI, then we do get an okay response. When we read back the data, it's hello world. And just to prove to you that I'm not cheating here, if we scroll down in the code, you can see that I am reading the result from the response that we get, and then I'm writing that out to the console directly. I didn't just cheat and write hello world and run this program. At the end of all of this, what we were able to do is use a SAS URI to go get a URI to upload bytes, and then we can go read those bytes back. I'm showing you all of this inside of one application, but the reality is that as long as someone has that SAS URI, they can go use that SAS URI with authentication based on the permissions that are here that you define when you create it. And as long as you're within that timeout period, they can use it to perform those actions. Now, if we go check out the other permissions very briefly, there are permissions to tag, read, add, remove, delete, delete the blob version, execute. There's a bunch of different things you can do. In this video, I was just covering read and write because those are some of the two most primitive things we can do. But you might want to include delete. You might want to be able to move things around. So depending on what your application needs are, this is absolutely something that you can extend. Again, just a quick reminder that if you're okay just working within one application or one service, you don't need to use the SaaS URIs. They're specifically valuable if you want to go let some other service, some other component in your system, including a front-end application, be able to read and write data directly to blob storage. And that saves you the bandwidth of going between different components in your system because they can interact with blob storage directly. I hope you found that helpful. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.